Uh, okay, that's great. Thank, thank you. Um, thanks so much for inviting me to this um, fabulous event and week of open access um, teaching and learning. And I think you'll see that there's a, a strong component of that in this project. And um, it might be a little bit different from um, your own experience and take on open access. Um, but that's a key part of what I wanna share with you today, which is um, assignments across disciplines. Um, so I just wanna start by giving you kind of an overview um, on the next slide is my agenda. Um, just an update where I'm at with this project. Um, and I really want to hear from you and build in some time um, after my short presentation, just to get your take on it. Um, and I'm still fairly early on in this project, but I'll start by just explaining what motivated me to begin this and the values that informed it, which includes the sharing and open access. Um, I'll share with you a couple of milestones and how um, this project, at the heart of this project is, is um, sharing and collaboration. And I'm hoping how you can not just support, but also engage with this project um, and help shape it, contribute to it and, and get something out of it for yourself. So um, on the next slide, I've got, um, just a couple of um, quotations that I think sort of encapsulate um, part of kind of the spirit informing this project. Um, so a book I just read, it was published in 2020 um, called Syllabus, The Remarkable Unremarkable Document That Changes Everything, um, which I finished reading not long ago. I'm actually just written a review of it. And it, it's, it's a great book. It's not without some problems. Um, but it's really relevant to this project. Students fail assignments and sometimes assignments fail students. Um, and if student work is the engine of a course, then the assignments are the creative center of our teaching practice. And that's really what Assignments Across Disciplines is trying to do is showcase um, that creative center of, of our teaching practice that's so important um, in supporting student learning. And um, really it takes a village that good assignments come from colleagues, um, they come from, so from other, other teachers, they come from librarians saying, hey, um, if you're gonna ask students to do research, you might wanna help them you know, build that skill into the assignment instructions. So on the next slide, uh, just the catalyst for this is really um, came from my going on a sabbatical a few years ago and thinking, uh, wow, in my, with me going off on sabbatical is this, are like hundreds and hundreds of assignments because I have been leading a writing across the curriculum program for a decade and worked with hundreds of faculty and TAs um, and, you know, trying to improve assignments and assignment instructions for students and making sure they're meaningful and thoughtful and scaffolded and that they build in you know, key skills, writing skills, information literacy skills. And I thought, yikes, if something happens to me, um, you know, there's, not, there's no kind of connector showcase of these assignments that I'd built up a lot of kind of institutional knowledge that I wanted to share and that I wanted uh, people sharing across disciplines because I was constantly in working with faculty, um, say I'd been working with economics for a few years and then um, stats, statistics got on board with our program. And so immediately I said to Jeff Rosenthal, um, I said, Jeff, you got to talk to Jen Murdoch uh, who teaches econometrics and they shared assignments and that made Jeff's work so much easier. And Jeff's assignment is actually in our database. So I'll get to that in a second. So on the next slide, um, we have, what is this thing? Well, it's essentially a peer reviewed online database of assignments or assessments um, and related materials like rubrics, um, in some cases activities to prepare students for the assignments and the platform, I'm sure lots of you will be familiar with is T-Space. Uh, so you can find it, well, you guys know this, but the beautiful thing about it, it comes up on Google searches and it's got some sort of, you can tag stuff and 
code it and the, the opportunity for metadata. You know a lot more about that than I do, but I had really good advice from librarians. Um, and then I wanted to be able to give people a choice in how they, I wanted to nudge them towards more um, generous um, sharing, but I wanted to give them choice. Um, so on the next slide, I have the goals um, that I think, you know, probably just from what I've said so far are, are kind of starting to emerge and be obvious to you. So really this, this sharing one, um, access, making these good assignments widely available, but really related to that is, is to promote conversations about teaching and learning and, and the types of assignments we're asking students to do and um, building on those, really developing capacity amongst um, faculty, librarians, educational developers, and increasing the visibility and value of assessments. And as you all know, sort of in the spirit of open access, you know, value doesn't have to be um, synonymous with, you know, or, or correlated rather with um, privacy and paywalls that I think actually you can make something more valuable by sharing it. Um, so I think that's certainly, you know, that's where this is really a spirit of open access. At the same time, I think you can, you can share that and um, have really generous um policies around how it's shared but that doesn't preclude recognizing people for their design work for their creating these te incredible teaching documents um, and i really felt strongly about it's not just about supporting faculty through tenure review although certainly that's great it's a great way to document uh, teaching excellent but but also helping um adjunct or sessional instructors who don't always have the time. They're giving often assigned courses at the last minute. Um, and, and new instructors and graduate students. Um, so again, that's all part of that community of practice. So on the next slide, I have the values, which as you can see up front and center is, is OER. Um, and increasingly, I, I'm mindful of accessibility inclusion and, and trying to make that one of the criterion um, for, you know, the assignments that we include in the database and more recently incorporating students perspective by having students not, you know, share nominate assignments, say, hey, this assignment really helped me learn um, and, and making it uh, rewarding innovations like this past year with uh, the emergency remote teaching. I've had a lot of instructors do some pretty amazing, uh, make some pretty amazing adjustments and in some cases, completely reinvent assignments and courses. Um, so I, I want to capture these examples and make sure that they don't get dropped. Oh yeah, when we go back to in-person, but to make sure we, we share these um, and continue to innovate. So just one, one quick slide is on the uh, research on the next slide informing this project. Um, just a couple of books, uh, one in one case, a journal that inspired this project that you might want to look up. Uh, one's called the Meaningful Writing Assignment that, sorry, the Meaningful, Meaningful Writing Project is in the center. Um, and then on the left is a book I contributed to a few years ago that was part of a shirk funded study of assignments and of syllabi across disciplines. Um, on the next slide, I have just so, you know, a little bit about my experience. And I've already mentioned that I've led a writing across the curriculum program for 10 years. Um, I've also done a lot of faculty development. Um, so again, that's where this is my interest and my passion for um, assignments and assessments come in. Um, and so where I'm at on the next slide, I've got these milestones. I won't bother like going through, but basically what's important is I've got a couple of dozen of these assignments up on T-Space. I've got another half dozen or more actually in the queue. Um, and we've begun doing some student outreach, which is great. So we've already had students nominate assignments. And um, I will, maybe when I'll, I'll after I'm finished, I'll just, I'll, I'll put the link in the chat so that you can see the form um that that you have to it's not onerous it's like takes less than 10 minutes to complete if you want to submit an assignment um oh, that's sorry that's on the next slide 
you can just see that form. So really easy for people to just upload their assignment and answer some questions so that we have context about that when people are searching the database that they know, oh, was this a 300 student course or a 30 person seminar, or, you know, 15 student seminar. And on the next slide, you'll see it's actually just like a little screenshot of T-Space. Um, and actually, I've, I've since <laughs> edited that because that paragraph was way too long. Anyway, to make it a little more friendly. And then um, we have a little website, um, just a very basic one to kind of, so we can send a link to people to get the word out about this project because, you know, I want to take it, you know, throughout U of T, but also beyond. Um, and then how we're selecting it. I think this is really important. Our criteria, which are on the next slide, or there's a link to it. Um, it's really, I would, I like to think of it as capacious, but principled. In other words, you know, we don't want to be too prescriptive about, you know, what, what's a good assignment. Um, but we also want to make sure there's quality. So things like, you know, that, that all of you know something about that the instructions are clear, what we're asking, what student, the assignment is asking students to do, that there's some sort of um, learning objective or outcome articulated. Ideally that there's some sort of scaffolding or development or staging, that there's, you know, sometimes that there's some um, formative feedback um and certainly that some form of evaluation criteria you know rubric or something is communicated to students so those are the main things but we're really flexible and increasingly i'm interested you know we want to evaluate them is the assignment accessible and inclusive and the next slide just is about our peer review process and this is where i'm hoping that some of you will want to get involved it's really about i, you know, I keep joking we're putting the peer back in peer review but that's what we're trying to do um, and really take this collaborative, conversational approach to helping uh, contributors make their assignments even better um, so that we get really high quality assessments up in, uh, on, on T-Space. And so that we're trying to just improve the assignment, not, not make someone feel bad or tell them everything they're doing wrong. So next steps are just growing the submissions, uh, launching instructor awards, and um, I want to add interactive features to the website, um, you know, interviews about assignment uh, with it with instructors or librarians or educational developers just about, you know, how do people come up with ideas for assignments, how do they improve them and maybe even asking students to just talk rather than, you know, fill out my <laughs> survey about, hey, describe a really fun or meaningful assignment that helped them learn. Um, so those are next steps. And um, eventually I want to develop an app for this. Um, so that's down the line and expand beyond U of T. Um, I, I'm very, I want to, I'd love to go global in this and maybe eventually multilingual. But for now, um, I just really want to grow our base at U of T and also include after this year, more multimodal assignments too, which is exciting, you know, where people are incorporating video into their assignments and other Wait, I don't want to be too writing centric just because that's my background. That's my bias. Um, and also, you know, getting more student input and perspective. So these are questions that I guess I'm interested um, in your ideas about, uh, but also assignments that you see, like what kind of assignments are you seeing and what kind of feedback do you give people? And if you teach, you know, these are questions I have for you. Um, so those are just, and, and then um, the last piece is really just circling back on the next slide is this issue of collaboration. Um, this is a big tent project. It's, it's about trying to connect people um, in different roles. We all have the same objective, which is we want to support student learning and improve how we deliver that and our piece of that. Um, and I guess the one thing I'm really proud of is this project recognizes that teaching happens not just in the classroom, in the you know, traditional course, but also in writing centers, in libraries, um, all across our campus in, in many different places and virtually now, of course. So um, my next steps are, and where I'd love your help is just communicating and publicity. Nominate, you know, love if you see a really great assignment in your work or you've got one or your colleagues, please consider submitting it. 
um, and help me figure out how to get the word out about this so that we can grow this um, open access educational resource. Uh, had a little write up in the varsity in January, which was great. And um, we're just looking for more of that support and ways to engage with people. Thanks. So I'd love to hear, you know, suggestions, questions. And then I'll, I'll, in the meantime, I'll put some links in. Oh, no, I can't because I don't have. Um, I'll have to send the, the links afterwards, but maybe you can you can Google it to find T-Space. Um, thank you. I'm just looking at the chat. Thank you so much. I was gonna say, can you see the chat? You can see the chat. <laughs> Where? How do I have my tiny, tiny? Oh, yeah, it's popping up. Um, okay, hold on, sorry. So, yes, that's great. Thank, oh, okay, now I see it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, the, sorry, I'm just reading the library liaison programs. Yes, that's a great idea. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I just, what I think is really neat is it's just a way of showcasing excellent teaching, right? That, that I know right now we're all kind of exhausted, students and faculty, um, but what's amazing is I think this kind of, it's, it shows just all the good things we're doing under difficult circumstances. Thanks. Sure, that sounds really amazing. Um, it, I guess one question I have, I'm thinking of a similar, not a similar thing, nothing similar to the level that you're doing it at, um, but just uh, a project that um, I participated in around collecting case studies from different oh. um, assignments that faculty were using in the business programs to like the different Ivy, Harvard and Ivy cases. Oh, yeah. um, because they they discovered that they were using the same ones at different stages of the curriculum, may have been teaching similar things by accident, not being aware. Yeah. Um, have you heard from faculty about this project and how it might, like for faculty who are working in similar departments, um, it might help to pull apart things that might be redundant or find gaps in things that aren't being assessed? Yeah, it's okay. So first of all, I didn't know about the, the case studies thing, which sounds really interesting. Um, so I'd love to connect with you and, and other people at Rotman about that. But yeah, I, I do see a real opportunity here to help people um, do kind of curricular, it's a tool in curriculum mapping, because um, in the departments I've worked in, like in economics, uh, when we started to really get um, uptake, um, in writing assignments, what was happening is people would say, oh, that's a really cool assignment. And then they were kind of, you know, doing really similar one. And then so students were getting all the same types of assignment over and over again. But they weren't, as you say, there were gaps and yet and repetition. So I think, yeah, there is potential to just be able to go to one place and see all of, um, you know, the range and to also just get departments talking to each other more. Um, yeah. or programs about what they're doing. And that's a lot of what I do in WIT, right, is I facilitate these departmental conversations because, you know, so often we do teach in silos, even in our own department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. I can definitely see the curriculum mapping um, ap application of such a repository. Now to just get the faculty to put it in, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's yeah. right. and. And the other, the other issue is that often new faculty will say to me, you know, I have no idea, like, if I'm asking students to do, like, too much, not enough, you know, or, or like, say, if they're doing writing assignments, like, how long should it be? What? Are, and so I would often, I can say, oh, I've worked with your apartment, here are some, and it's not that people are not willing to share, but it's just they don't think of it, they don't think of the value of, the, of, of their intellectual labor in that way. They think of their publications, right, because we're research university, but they don't actually think of the value of their teaching um, materials, which I think is kind of interesting. They undervalue that. Oh, yeah, that is really interesting. Thanks for thanks for sharing on that. 
Um, thank you. Thanks for your, your question and suggestion too. And thanks so much, uh, Fiona, for putting those links in the chat. And I can also see here, Jennifer mentioned that uh, she finally posted an assignment to the database. So thanks for that, Yay, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, because Jennifer, you're incredibly prolific and creative with your assignments. And you're, again, someone who does multimodal stuff. So that's really exciting because um, we want um, we want just diverse, right? We want diversity to show someone, um, you know, people the full range of possibilities of what they can do. Because uh, as you all know, you can get into a rut sometimes with assignments. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Any last questions for Andrea? If not, I'll move us over to our, our building and our, our, our showcase component will reconvene at 2.30. Okay, well, once again, thank you so much, Andrea. I'm going to pause the recording now, and then I'll start sharing my screen 